I'm Mora and I'm a trainer at the Shedd Aquarium. I'm here in Seward, Alaska working at the Alaska Sea Life Center working with one of their rescued sea otter pups. We received a phone call on our 24-hour stranding hotline. It was a couple that was walking along the beach in Kasila. It was a place that they travel very frequently and they saw this little pup that was just floundering on the beach. And as they were sitting there, you know, being the good Samaritans that they are, they were looking at these two eagles that were just eyeing this little otter. And looking in the area, they didn't see any adult otters that were nearby. Here in Alaska, we know that the pups really are dependent on their mother until at least six months of age. So seeing this little guy in a pup coat, we knew that he was definitely less than six months of age. So we had permission to pick him up. At that point, once we have that human contact, we are limited in our abilities to put an animal like that back into the wild. We had the opportunity to transport him back to the center and we noticed, oh, his coat was just in such a rough shape. And here is this little guy, he's hungry, he's starving. He's just not doing well, he's not thriving. And so the around the clock care that we started on him um, started with replacing the fluids and then building on his nutrition. Sea otter pups do require 24 hour care. Most of the day is kind of works around his feed schedule. So we feed him every three hours. Um, he gets solid food which includes capelin and clam, and also formula, which we can put some medications into if he needs them. Um, I also do a lot of behavioral observations on him. We're kind of watching to see how much he grooms. His coat isn't in great condition, and when it's not in great condition, they can lose a lot of body heat when they spend time in the water. Sea otters, when they groom, will push air under their fur and kind of create a layer of it to help insulate them. Um, and if his fur is all matted down, it can't hold that air. He grooms a lot on his own. It's just not necessarily doing the right thing. Um, he needs to get better at it. So we're kind of showing him what a good coat should look like uh, when we can, and he'll hopefully catch up. The Alaska Sea Life Center is very fortunate to be working with industry partners like the Shedd Aquarium. And we've been having an ongoing dialogue about conservation of these important species, like the sea otter. If this is an animal that survives due to the health of their fur, you can imagine that if you're talking about oil spills, if you're talking about contaminants in the water, this is an animal that will be affected first, not last. So this is the message that we can bring to people around the world to say we need to keep our waters clean, we need to keep our waters healthy. And this is a face to put with the concept so that when you, when you have that moment and you start thinking about global climate change, we hope that this is the face that they'll think of. Sea otters are vital to their ecosystems. They are a keystone species, so they're really good indicators of the health of their environment. If the sea otters were to disappear, kelp forests might disappear as well because sea otters eat the sea urchins and sea urchins eat the kelp forest. So if the sea otters weren't around, the sea urchins would destroy the kelp forests and the kelp forests are home to tons and tons of species. The staff at the Alaska Sea Life Center has been extremely welcoming. It's been a really great experience and I really just feel very fortunate to work at a place like Shed Aquarium that can send me to help animals in need.